I'm Dr. Ann Peters, the director of the Clinical Diabetes Programs at the University of Southern California, and I'm here today to talk to you about the new ADA algorithm for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Now this algorithm is really a revision of the algorithm that was published about a year and a half ago. And what's fundamentally different is that there are now two tiers of diabetes drugs. So there's tier one, and tier one is in essence the drugs that we've had around for a long time that are drugs we've known in terms of side effects, in terms of efficacy, and that's insulin, sulfonylurea agents, and metformin. The tier two drugs are newer agents, and they include pioglitazone or actose, and exenatide or Bieta. Now the way the algorithm suggests treating type 2 diabetes is as follows. First of all, the patient presents with new onset diabetes and both metformin and lifestyle modifications are started simultaneously. The patient should lose weight if they're overweight, they should increase their exercise, they should really work with the lifestyle component of this along with the metformin to help improve their blood sugar levels. If that is not effective at keeping the patient at target, which should in general be an A1C of less than 7%, then a second agent from either tier one or tier two is added to bring their A1C below 7%, and then if that doesn't work, another agent is added, and so forth. The goal is to not wait too long before adding the next agent. So if the A1C is 7.2 or 7.4%, add another agent. Don't wait till the A1C is eight or nine because that makes it much less likely that the addition of the next drug is going to get the patient to target. Now it's also very important to individualize patient care. There are patients who are elderly with macrovascular disease who may not tolerate hypoglycemia, whose circumstances mitigate against type control. So they may need somewhat higher targets. And we certainly learned about this through studies like the ACCORD study, where subjecting patients to significant increases in rates of hypoglycemia may not necessarily be beneficial. Now in my own practice, I tend to use a lot of tier two drugs. I start patients on metformin and lifestyle then if the A1C goes up, I'm likely to add in pioglitazone, and then if they need another agent, I may add in exenatide to help both reduce their weight and help with beta cell function. But in my practice, just like I'm sure as in yours, there really is no one-size-fits-all approach, and that's why these ADA guidelines give a fair amount of flexibility. I'd suggest reviewing these guidelines for yourself. They're published on the ADA website at www.diabetes.org. Thank you. It's Dr. Ann Peters from Medscape.